Okay, so early mind, I think, uh, still remember what we saw last time. Uh, so I'll go to just one summarizing slide. Yeah, this is one. Okay. So basically, uh, we saw. Uh, uh, basically, uh, in this lecture, we see we, we are covering uh, buffer overflow, which is uh, major type of software vulnerabilities, which is basically the, uh, the the topic of software security. And there are other uh, types of vulnerabilities. Uh, we will not cover them in class, but you will uh, do them in the assignment. So the assignment basically is a continuation of this lecture. Okay. So you're going to cover the other types of, uh, of vulnerabilities, which are basically, uh, if you understand buffer overflow, it will be easy for you to understand most of the arts, not all of them, but most of them, like string, uh, string uh, format, like integer overflow, like heap overflow. Uh, all of these are kind of variants of, uh, of buffer overflow. Um, so remember in the buffer overflow, so it's uh, uh, the major type is stack overflow. This is what uh, we uh, we were covering. So uh, when data is on, in the stack, okay, and uh, you have some variable stored on the stack, if you put in one data variable more data than it can hold, what it will do? For example, this buffer is of size 500. This is corresponding code. This, this is the code we're going to see in this uh, in the demo. So if you have a code like this, so you have a buffer of size 500. It's an array, basically, uh, array of characters. And then, what we do with, uh, with that buffer? What do we do that, with that buffer? We put in that buffer this data, RV. And RV, basically, this is the data received from the user. Okay? If the data uh, received, if you put the data received from the user on the buffer, uh, basically, if you put less than 500 characters, we are fine, because the size here is 500. But if we exceed that, what will happen? What will happen if we exceed? <coughs> so you will overwrite other data uh, values in the stack. Okay? You can overwrite other variables, we saw it last time. But the, the problem is, when you overwrite these context data, stored EBP and stored EIP, in particular stored EIP, if you uh, overwrite the stored EIP, basically this is the return address. Okay? So after you finish this function, uh, to know where to return, we need this EIP. So if we override that, we will force the problem to go somewhere. The, 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 we control uh, the, the the attack controls. Okay. Now uh, the typical scenario when we override. So if we put more than uh, 500, the buffer will be overwritten, and then of course we can override the all the space, but whatever we want, by whatever we want. So, uh, to carry out uh, an attack, or to exploit this uh, buffer overflow, the, uh, the typical scenario is to override the, um, that return EIP with a malicious address, which points back to the same buffer where we put our yeah, the, uh, uh, malicious code, called the shell code. Okay. Um, we covered, so, yeah, we covered uh, some protection measures. I, I think we covered half of them. So basically, protection measures against uh, buffer overflow. We <coughs> saw, uh, uh, okay, so secret coding, standard, properly such. So basically, secret coding, you need to do it at the source code. You may need to make sure that uh, whenever you put some data in a buffer, it should be within the limited size. Okay, this is one thing. But you can do plenty of other things. The other types like standard, properly stack shields, all of these, they basically use the same main idea, which is which is what? The in the other application. No, uh, yeah, this is one idea. This is one idea. Basically, uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, keep a backup of the return address in some other array. This is one one idea. But the major idea here is what? Uh, canary value. Canary value. So basically, you insert the canary value in the stack, and you make sure that it is not uh, uh, is not overwritten. So uh, yeah, the canary value. Basically, we put the canary value here on the stack. And then, if you need, uh, if you basically you will override the buffer, and your goal is to override, for example, the EIP, you will, you will necessarily override that canary value, and basically the uh, the code. Uh, I mean, 
the, um, the OS will find out that you are trying to, uh, to override the um, Now, there are two other uh, important measures. These are the most important measures that ask a lot. We're going to see them with an example today. So, uh, uh, as I am explaining the, uh, the example, I'll, uh, I'll explain it. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I will take the same, that same example. Okay. So I have that same example here. It's exactly the same example. So basically it doesn't show very well, but uh, exactly the example is light. So yes. we have a buffer of 500, and then we copy that's under me into, uh, into buffer. And that's it. So I'll try to show you how we can take advantage of this, how we can exploit this. Okay. Now, uh, so the first thing is we need to uh, compile this code. So we need to compile. So how to compile it? GCC C dash O and then we call it just the executable is called Vuln. Okay. Now we will execute that. So Vuln and then uh, I I basically this this program I mean, expects an input from the user. So whenever whenever we execute this we need to uh, supply some uh, some input or some yeah, parameter argument. Okay, so A, 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 for example. These are four A, so a string containing four A. So if I execute this, it works fine. So it will copy that data into buffer. Everything is fine. It will, it will exit the problem model. Okay. Now, when the problem happens here, when instead of passing here a small string, I will pass a long string of size. Yeah, and it will start from 500. Let's, let's, tr let's try it with just 500. So here I'm not, I will not uh, keep repeating A 500 times and counting them. I will write a script that will write the, uh, the, uh, the 500. So here, uh, uh, Vuln. Uh, then uh, I will write a script. So Perl. Then dash E print. And then I will write A. A, I will repeat it 500 times. 500 times. So, this, so basically, this is a script that we will repeat a 500 times. Uh, so be Sorry. No, let's start with 500. 500 should should be fine. It should be fine. And then Sorry. The end character. Yes. The end character will be uh, repeat a. No, here it will not be part of the uh, of the script. The end character. Yeah. So it's Okay, nothing happens. So it works normally because the size of the buffer, so the, the input is exactly the size of the buffer. Now, if I add just one more, so I will supply one five or one A's. Okay, now we have the problem. Okay, as soon as you exceed that, so basically, as soon as you exceed, what will happen? Uh, stack smashing detected. So you are trying to override some uh, some other values on the stack. It is detected. Okay. Now this is basically the stack, the stack uh, smashing detected. This is the uh, uh, I think the uh, propolis. So basically, uh, Linux by default is using the uh, the uh, uh, canary bar protection, and it detects it right away. Okay. Now, to uh, of course here to show you what happens uh, as uh, I mean, while we find some protection, we will disable it and we move on. So I will disable now the uh, canary value uh, uh, protection. So for that, uh, I will compile the code. So GCC and then uh, uh, vuln.c dash o uh, vuln. And then uh, the, uh, uh, the option to uh, disable the canary value protection is FNO stack protection. protection. This will disable the uh, stack protection, uh, stack protector. Okay, uh, that's it. Okay, now if we compile, the, if we execute the code the second time, five oh one, nothing. So it is has been disabled. Okay. Um, now let's try here. It doesn't. It doesn't uh, abort. The program works fine. Okay. So we're gonna try to increment that five oh one uh, ace until the program crashes. 
Okay, so basically here, let's say if we put uh, 504, for example, nothing happens. If we put 7, nothing happens. Let's say make it uh, 15, let's say. Now, there is segmentation problem. Okay, see, so there is a, uh, a certain number where basically segmentation fault it means what? It means that the EIP has been confirmed. Because when it returns, here in the, all the previous cases, the EIP was not touched. So it will return normally, it works fine. Okay? But uh, as, long, and as soon as we exceed some uh, threshold, the EIP is overwritten and there is a segmentation fault. So to see exactly what happens, we will uh, use the debugger, of course, to see exactly what happens on the stack, etc. So for that, we need to compile the code with the dash g uh, yani option so that it can be deb with, with debugging information, basically. Okay. Then, uh, how to debug uh, any C code or executables in Linux? The, the major debugger. It's not what is the, the most common debugger in Linux. Said like this. <laughs> it is not a graphical user uh, based, it is a command line. Uh, debugger is GDB. GDB. It's GDB, the debugger of GCC. Okay. So basically, here GDB and VUN. Okay. So it starts. Okay. Now let's redo the same thing to see what, uh, what happens on the. Uh, what happens. So basically, here I will execute the same code. So run here and then I will repeat the same script. Perl uh, dash e print then a repeated. Let's say I repeated. I repeated five hundred. Okay, five hundred fifteen. Okay, five fifteen. Okay, uh, that's it. Run. Okay, yeah. So I repeated, but here we have more information. Here, what we will have here? For example, see the signal segmentation fault, and it will give you the address where it. Uh, it has the uh, segmentation form. So basically, uh, here it, 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 it tried to go here, but there is nothing to execute there. So basically, the EIP has been overwritten by this address. And this address, uh, see what it's composed. It has uh, 00, then 41, 41, 41. 41 is what? A. It's the A. 41 is the A, the ASCII code of the A. Okay. So here it has, the EIP has been overwritten by three A's and Zeros. We don't care about the zero, but it has been overwritten by three A. So basically, what is we are looking here for the offset until the EIP. So what is the offset here according to you? With 515, we just overwrote three A's of the EIP. So what is the offset? 512. So 512, it will overwrite um, anything, something else, and then just after 512, you have the EIP. So to make sure of this, um, so basically here. Uh, uh, so I'll repeat the same uh, instruction, but here I will add, so I will put here 512, and then I will um, add to that, just I will place B's instead of A's. And I will check if I hit uh, direct, yani exactly the, uh, the EIP. Okay? So basically, according to our uh, yani, uh, uh, yani observation, it will, it will hit it exactly. So X42, X42. X42. Okay, so here I am trying to override the just the EIP with with this piece. We said that the offset of the EIP is 512. We place 512 A's, and then just after that, and right after that, we have the uh, the, uh, the EIP. Basically. So here, what 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 is supposed to happen here? So basically, it will you will have a segmentation fault, and the address that will be displayed will be the B's. Okay, this is what should happen. Yes. So you see here. So this is 42, 42, 42. This is the four Bs we supply. So uh, we know exactly what is the uh, the um, offset of the uh, uh, of the EIP. Now, what is the next step? So you know now that if you have a stack, if you have a stack, uh, basically you have here uh, some data, and then here you have EIP or return EIP. Return EIP. Okay. Now, what what we just found here? This is the size uh, 500. 500. 
what we just found is that when you override this buffer with 512 A's, you right uh, after that you will have the beats, uh, the uh, the yeah, you turn it uh, So how now we can, how to exploit this uh, this vulnerability? How to exploit? Yeah, so there is no where the index is. Sorry, the index. The point. The address. Get yeah, the address of your here. Here, see, see, see. Exploiting and attacking and testing. All this happens by uh, supplying a different input. Here, the input is just A and B. Now, if you want to exploit this this vulnerability, you need to supply different input. Okay, you need to provide this program different. So my question is, what kind of input here? Because all the input is just A, A. Uh, everywhere, everywhere, and then here we supply these. Now, this this is just a test, a check. But what we now, how to uh, exploit this? Yeah, uh, so, the the code, uh, in the so, first thing, we need to place the malicious code here. Yes. So, basically, the malicious code, so here, uh, somewhere here, we will put the uh, shell code. Shell code. And then here, what are we going to put? Yeah. We should put the address of this. Basically, this the address of the starting of the. Uh, How do you get the, the address? How do you get the address? No, so no, no, no. Uh, but yeah, still, it's my address. But still, but still, how do you get to the first? Maybe you get before you start with zero. Okay, we will check. So here, basically, all this happened with the testing. Supply and input, get the content of the start, and see. So here, what we're gonna do? Um, Yes. Uh, if if you are targeting the same, uh, let's say, uh, operating system Windows with the same service pack, it will be the same. It will be the same. But uh, you can deal with this. We we saw a slide last time that that works that talks about the mobility. Because, because the difference will be, you know, 4 bytes, 8 bytes, something like that. It, it will not be a huge yeah, any difference, okay? So for that, you, uh, there's this line, maybe I'll, I'll go back to that, mobility, basically. Copy. The idea is what? You copy, you no. repeat. The so thing. instead of having just one return address, you will, uh, if you know what is the right return address, you will supply 50, because your buffer is large, okay? And then here, if you don't know the exact this address, what are you going to put? No. You had put here knobs and then you jump anywhere there. So it will work almost in any, uh, any uh, situation. Um, uh, now this, uh, I have to assume that the addressing of the stack is always static, right? Hmm? The addressing of the stack is always static. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we will cover all these, any, uh, the randomization and the uh, there. Um, Okay, uh, so now again we're gonna put the uh, shell code here. But what, which, which shell code? So here I have a file where I have a set of shell codes. Each one of them does something different. Okay. So here I will use this one, this shell code. So the size of this is the most important thing here, uh, the size. The size here is how much? It says 55 bytes. So we have a shell code of size 55 bytes. Okay, 55 bytes. So basically, we need to build, there is more computation to do here. Okay. Uh, so we have 500 or 512. We placed 55 bytes, which is the uh, shell code. So here, what is the size of this? The data before the shell code. You can pick, you can pick any number. So basically, let's say it is 300. 300 bytes. So I, I place 300 A's or 300 knobs or whatever. Okay. Uh, then, how many other uh, data here should I put? So 500 minus 355. Right? 512, not 500. 512, yeah. 512 minus uh, 355, which is 157. 157. Okay. 157. Okay. So basically, we're gonna put 300 junk knobs, then uh, 
55 uh, bytes for the shell code, then 157 for the rest, right? And then what? Uh, so we need the address. Wait, okay. Then we'll, we, will, we, will, we will build it uh, one step at a time. So basically here... So this is the, this is the, the, the shell code. So basically, we're gonna put uh, here is what this is what no so it will be three hundred times. Then all oh, this is the shell code. This is the shell code. Then after that, I am placing here what <laughs> and not what. <laughs> Who can tell me what? Why is just one not? Is this the USB? No. Why is just one not? Just one extra byte. Now here. Uh, because the size of the uh, shell code is 55, it's not multiple of 4. <laughs> so just to make it multiple of 4, I add 1, so it, it will become uh, multiple of 4, and then the, uh, the remaining uh, data can be multiple of 4. Because if I need to specify, uh, I repeat the same address several times, the remaining uh, offset should be multiple of 4. Because an address is, 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 is 4 bytes. Okay? Okay. So here, but here, what I do, I, I press one extra knob, and then the uh, 41, which is the A, repeated 156. So I said 157 because we, we, we used uh, just one knob, and then I press just one any others, any. Others. Okay. So let's let's try this and see uh, what happens. It will not work, of course, but it will allow us to see uh, what happens on the stack. So here I am going to put here run. Then I place that, paste, okay, and ah, before that, no, before that, before that, because this will, I need to see when when I execute my code, I need to see what happens. I need to, yeah, I need break the execution and see content of the stack so that I can uh, see the addresses, etc. So for that, I need to place what <coughs> breakpoint. Break a breakpoint, so this is the code. I sh where should I place the exact? Where exact should I place the breakpoint? Before the return. Before the return? No, before copying. Before the return. Is it before copying? Before copying, we don't care. What, what, no, nothing happened yet. Oh, just yeah. after the copy. Mm -hmm. So basically, I need to specify the breakpoint just after this uh, execu execution of this instruction. So I need to place it here. So I find it. Exactly. That. Before the return, before the return, and after the uh, the copy, so I'll place here B8, breakpoint in 8. Okay, so it's placed there. So now I'm ready. So run. Paste. What happens? Breakpoint. It, it hardened. Now the execution stopped. Now we need to see the content of the, uh, content of the stack to understand what is happening. The overwrite happened. Stack have been overwritten. We need to see what is the state of the stack now. After just after the the, uh, the override and before return. Okay. So for that, the instruction to see the content of the stack will be x two hundred x and then uh, percentage ESP. This will print the content of the stack starting from the uh, stack pointer and displaying two hundred uh, two hundred okay, more uh, locations. Okay. So what you see there? No, no, no. First of all, first of all, the stack it, it doesn't look like a stack here. Yes. It's a bunch of things that is. So it is a, these are the addresses. Where is the top of the stack? The top of the stack is where? Here. Is it? Is it on the top or on the bottom? No. Huh? No. Little ending or big ending? No. Remember that the stack, the uh, it 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 um, it moves toward. Small addresses or high addresses? Small, 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 small addresses. Lower addresses. Mm -hmm. So basically, you have here EF20, EF30, EF40. So the top of the stack is because the addresses here are, are the, the, those ones. So the top of the stack is, so I think, this one somewhere. Okay. We don't care about the top of the stack. Okay. We care about what happened in the overriding, close to the EIP, etc. Mm -hmm. So you have the knobs, all these are knobs. And then where the uh, shellcode starts, just after the knobs, we place 300 knobs, and then just after that we place the uh, the, the shell code. So the shell code, as you see here, the knobs stops here, and then you have the shell code. So the shell code starts here. This is the shell code. 
And then the shape root continues, continues after this. Now we go to the next page. And then we have the shell code, the shell code. After the shell code, we place what? No, one no, knot. One knot. What is it? It's here. This is a knot. Mm -hmm. okay. 156A. Okay. Then we have all A's. These are the all A's. And then just, just after the A's, we're going we're to see what? Four B's. Four B's. What, where are the four B's? Uh, we have three B's with the uh, knot. Yeah. We have one knot and two B's. These are part of the shell code. If you look uh, to the shell code, you will find that the shell code ends with three B's, not four B's. Even. This is the fourth one. Mm, yeah. Four B's. Okay. So basically, uh, th uh, the uh, A's they stop here, and here you have the uh, what? The four B's. The four B's. Basically, this is the EIP. Mm -hmm. This is where the EIP is covered. Okay. Now. We need to, uh, to carry out the attack. What we need to do exactly? The, the only thing we need to modify here is those 42s. Mm -hmm. We need to place, instead of B's, we need to place the address of the, the shell code. I don't know if I can go back. No, I couldn't. Anyway, I repeat the same thing. I repeat the same. Oh, okay. Thanks. Um, so, what, which return address should I place? Anywhere. Normally, normally, I can specify any address of these. Okay, but let's get it exactly. You know, I will jump right away to the, the shell code. So, the shell code here, what is it? It is here. So, I need the address of this. So, basically, uh, BFFFF060, this is the address of this first uh, word. Now to get the address of uh, of this, 64. this is 64, yeah. because we have 4 bytes. And then the address of this, 68. So this address is 68, so I'm going to write it. So it is uh, BF, F, 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 and then 68. Okay, 68. Type. So this is the address I will supply instead of B's, I will supply this address. Let's do it. Yeah, this is the point. This is the point. Continue here. Continue. Do segmentation form, of course. So let's repeat the same code. And then here, uh, when I specify the address, I supply little ending. So basically here, uh, uh, the address will start by 68, 0x68, then uh, F0 and then FF and then BF. Yes. Okay. So let's let's run this. See what happens. Okay. Execute. Then it is uh, there is a breakpoint. Let's let's take a look at the uh, at the uh, stack to see if everything is fine. ESP. Okay. So here is fine. And here. You have the 41s and then BFFFF068. We are fine. We are fine. Okay. So, uh, and the, the, the others are still the same. Okay. Now, let's uh, continue to see what happens. Normally, what should happen here? Something will happen. You will. Something will happen. The shell code, the shell code will run. So, basically, we will put the return address. It will jump back to the shell code and normally it should execute the shell code and should uh, do whatever the shell code is, is doing. Okay. Uh, now the shell code, what it does here is really a shell code. It will give you a shell. It will give a shell. Okay. So you should see the comment prompt inside, inside GDB, inside the uh, run. Okay. Um, so here, continue. See what happens. Now, what what you notice here? It didn't work. You don't you don't have a shell code. You don't have a shell. You don't have one. There is a mutation fault. But here the return address, is it correct? Yes. It's correct. The return address is correct, but it didn't work. Mm -hmm. So here, okay, we can investigate this with debugging, step by step, etc. I will tell you right away what happened. What happened is that it worked fine, it reached the, uh, the, that address and then, uh, yeah, that address, and jumped to the shell code, and when it reached the shell code, there is segmentation font. Why? Because uh, it, it, you are not allowed to execute code from that, from that location. And this is 
the second protection measure, or the most important protection measure against buffer overflow, which is which is that. Which is that. So that, that basically, that execution prevention, also known as the NXB on our works, it is basically the idea is when you have the stack, uh, basically you have all the RAM or the memory of your uh, so memory of your uh, process. The memory is split into two parts. One part which is writable, you can write on the stack, but not executable. Not executable. Okay, and there are there is another location which is not writable, just read read only, but it, you can execute code from it. Okay, so basically the stack uh, is put in a location which is just writable but not executable. Okay, this is why uh, we see, we see here uh, works. Works it means write or execute, not both. Because if you can write in one location and execute in another location, uh, the attack might work. Okay. So basically, to carry out the attack, this attack, or to finish this attack, we need to uh, disable, disable that. And to disable that, basically, it's uh, it's easy. So I need to go uh, out, and then the same code, the same executable, which is vuln, I will uh, basically disable that for just that executable. So the uh, the, code, the program uh, that allows to do that is exec stack. Exec stack. So basically, to unload the tuition from the stack, dash s well. Okay. Isn't that an OS related? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, how to disable the dev? It depends on uh, on the OS. In Windows, you do it. You do it from the uh, uh, in my 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 computer, and there is there are some uh, any, uh, any configuration that where you can disable uh, the dev for particular problems. Uh, now it is disabled, and then let's redo the same thing now. GDB, and then um, I will repeat the same thing. I should have copied that. Okay. Oops. Copy. As uh, we said, the address is 68 uh, F0 FF and then B. Now, normally, if that is disabled, we will repeat the same problem, it should work. Okay. So, yeah, what happens here? Bin, dash, and you have a gold line. Okay. So it works. So you have a shell. Okay, although you are running the vulnerable any, any C program, it gives you shot. Okay, uh, so uh, yeah, it works. So you can see here LS, for example, it will display the content of the current folder, etc. Okay, if you do exit, it will go back to GDB. See, it returns to GDB and it says exit is normal. So it works fine. The program works. So the vulnerability works, works, works fine. Now, let's uh, do the same thing, but here we are inside GDB. Let's do it outside. So here, what happens? Uh, or, uh, so is it uh, the uh, with the privilege uh, of administrator or root? Or uh, yeah. Here, I, I I obtained it with uh, just user privilege. Okay, but I will show you how you can turn this into privilege escalation. You are user, you can turn it into uh, into uh, into root. Okay. Um, now I will repeat the same uh, the same attack, but outside GDP. So what I should do here is vuln. Okay. Or Slash, uh, that's slash run. and then I will specify that long paste, and here the same thing. I will put here 68 um, f0, and then ff and bf. Okay, it should be supposed to work. When I execute this, what happens? Still segmentation form. So uh, inside GDB it works. Outside it doesn't. Now here is the third protection measure against uh, buffer overflow, which is ASLR. Which is ASLR. So basically ASLR, it is what? This is ASLR, address space layer randomization. Uh, basically here when we get this address, 
uh, it is kind of static, right? It is static, always the same, same thing. And even if you run it on other OS, it will be also the same address. It is static. Now, uh, the, because why? Uh, when you execute a program in, a, in an OS, typically it will be loaded in the same address all the time. In the same address. Now, ASLR, or uh, layout randomization, space layout randomization, it will randomize that. So, whenever you execute the program, it will be loaded into a different address. Each time it will be loaded in a different address. So that it will prevent you from guessing exactly where the, uh, the return address is. Or any address here on the stack. Okay? There will be a, a, some randomization effect. Okay? And this is the ASLR uh, uh, measure. Okay? Now, to see you, uh, yani that, uh, or to show you how this um, SLR, ASLR works, uh, let's execute. Yeah, execute the program several times and see in which address it, it will be loaded. Okay, so suppose here um, I will do the following. So here, here add dd and then I will execute vuln and I will execute it with aaa for example. Just I will execute one times and ldd to show where exactly the process is loaded. So it will say here uh, it will load it in b76fc00. Okay. Now, if I do the same uh, execution a second time, it will be in a different address. So the address is different. And as long as you execute, it will be in a different address. Okay. <laughs> yes, in GDB it will be the same. Yes, yes, inside GDB. But outside, ASL will be there. Okay. Now, to, uh, to, uh, to make our attack work here, what we need to do? We need to disable XLR. Okay, let's disable XLR. Okay, so basically here echo. Uh, so here the uh, the uh, that property, you know, everything in Linux is a file. So the property for ASLR is uh, in um, what is it? Yeah. So just it's uh, an integer value that will indicate whether ASLR is enabled or not. I will change that part. So basically I'll put here echo, and then zero zero for disable, and then. Um, Proc for process, then uh, sys kernel, and then randomize, randomize VA space. Okay, so this is this is the uh, uh, configuration uh, value uh, uh, corresponding to uh, ASLR. I would use it. I make make it. No, no, no. Because this is echo. It will uh, print that zero inside the file. Now the the uh, default value is two. Two means ASLR is enabled. Okay. I make it zero, and then if I repeat, it works. Huh? Okay. Uh, so if I do the same experiment, LDD stuff, it will be in uh, seven zero 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 the address. If I repeat that, Seven, 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 zero, two. Wait a minute. Vim. Rock. Uh, you did echo for zero, including the back. So if you can yeah. enter the command, the echo is mostly randomized. Ah, see, it has the dot edge. That is the regular part. All right. So basically here echo. Oh yeah. Great. Yes. Like uh, this. Okay, it's a dimension. Okay, so sudo su. Yeah, this is one. Yeah. I, I was very surprised. It didn't. So here I am. Sh I am root. I will repeat that. So echo zero and then uh, proxies. Kernels, randomize, so space, yes. So here, if I uh, uh, exit, I repeat the same thing. Then it is zero. See? Now it should be the same. So basically, LDD, well, up, it is FFF000. I repeat the same thing. FFF000, it's loaded all the time with the same address. So now if I repeat that long uh, tag, yeah, this one, now it should, it should work. Yeah. 
it will be the same. It will be uh, it will be that one. See? Yes. Okay. Now, if you want to turn it into um, into um, a privilege escalation, you need to just change the uh, because here programs are supposed to be uh, owned by the root. Okay. So it changes the ownership of that uh, of that file, the executor. So basically, what what should I do here? Do SU and then own uh, zero zero and then vuln okay and then ch mode seven five five vuln okay and then exit. Now if I repeat, I am see here. I am here. I am. Who am I? Who? Who am I? Who am I? Yes. yes. So I'm used. Okay. Now, if I carry on the attack, okay, what happens? I am root. Yes. See, you have you see the the, the, the hash. Okay. So be who am I? And root. Okay. So if the uh, vulnerable program is owned by the root and you carry out the attack, you will, although you are running that program as, as user, you will get you will get to typical uh, uh, installation of that. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's a summary. It gives you an idea about the, the buffer overflow, what we can do with buffer overflow. Uh, of course, you know, the protection measures, Canary, Deb, ASLR, there are any ways to bypass them. Not all the time, but there are uh, any ways in a lot of situations where you can you can bypass them. This is why uh, the buffer was still very uh, very calm. Okay. Uh, now the remaining of the slide is just about uh, patching. So basically to, uh, to, uh, to to protect yourself from those type of software vulnerabilities, you need to keep your software updated all the time. And there are you know uh, any problem I will discuss in the next time. So here, yeah. So operating system are huge and contains many bugs. So you have, uh, you know, OSs are here just OSs, but the the, the issue can be uh, targeting any any software. Okay. Uh, so the number of bugs is huge, and to keep uh, this is an idea of the of the number of uh, yani number of lines of code in every OS. See, it's huge. So in those huge numbers, you yani for sure you would find the flaws and vulnerabilities. Uh, yeah, example here in the uh, Windows, up to Windows Vista, okay. a number of uh, lines of code involved in any, uh, all of these OSs. Okay. So with those you will find uh, any, uh, most of the time vulnerabilities. So uh, 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 these are different uh, versions of updates or different types of updates. There is security patch, hotfix and service patch. All these three, they involve some security uh, any issue. Okay. So they will try to fix some security issue. Okay. So here, security patch, general software security update intended to cover vulnerabilities that have been discovered. Hotfix, uh, yeah, same thing. Uh, service pack, cumulative package of all security updates plus additional features. Uh, here, see, uh, you have uh, different types of, uh, of uh, updates. Critical update, feature pack, update, patch, hotfix, update rollup, service pack. Uh, the last four involve security. Okay. The last four involve uh, involve security. Okay. Uh, and of course, uh, it is always good to have uh, always better to make uh, the uh, update automatic. Okay. Not uh, any explicit whenever you, you want it. It's automatic. Um, and to manage advantages of uh, there, is, there is also what we call distributed automatic patch update service. Yeah. So in some organization you have a, an update server. A server in charge of updating all the machine, all the machines. So it's not uh, يعني, uh, managed locally in every, in every machine. Every, uh, all the machines are updated by one uh, central server. So like this, you have one uh, automated patch update server. 
that will retrieve, fetch the updates, and then send them or forward them or apply them on all the uh, assistant uh, machine. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's more automated. There are several advantages, like uh, uh, it saves uh, the bandwidth and time. Uh, even if the computer does not have internet access, it will be updated. Every machine is updated simultaneously. All the machines are updated at the same time. Uh, and users cannot disable or circumvent uh, updates. Okay. Yeah, so that's it. You have our here uh, some. Uh, here maybe you need these in the uh, summit. Okay. Yeah, you need these uh, references in the, uh, the summit. Anyway, so let's stop here and then uh, see you next time. Okay. <laughs>